what is going on movie fans and welcome back to my channel i'm excited right now because this is my first official new movie of the new year and my first official review of the new year and it is for the new blumhouse horror movie by the name of night swim now the question is is this one of those blumhouse hidden gems that surprises everyone at the beginning of the year or is it one of those stereotypical horror movies that gets dumped at the beginning of the year and hopes to kind of make its budget in its first opening weekend and then people just forget about it well, we'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler-free review. But first, before we get into my thoughts, and I'll let you all know by the end of this review if this film is worth checking out in theaters, let's start the conversation in the comments below. Let me know if this is a film you are excited to check out, but more importantly, once you've seen the film, let's talk about your pros and cons. What did you think about the direction, the story, the performances? Were you actually scared while watching this film, and will you take another dive into the pool after watching this let's discuss that and all the fun stuff in the comments below so listen man i'm happy it's 2024 i'm excited for this new year and funny enough i was looking forward to seeing this film because i'm going back to last year first movie i saw of the year was a blumhouse horror film by the name of megan i had fun with it because it played into the campiness and the ridiculousness of a ai killer doll so i was hoping that this film which by the way for those that aren't too familiar it is based on a 24 14 short film by the same name by the same director who's making his directorial debut and this time around this film follows a family who moves into the suburbs and they move into a house that has a pool that is haunted so i'm hoping yo we're about to get ridiculous we're about to have some fun Let's talk about it, y'all. Let's get into my positives. And I will say, talking about the pool of it all, I have to say it's the main character. It is the best part of this movie for me because I thought that the underwater sequences, every time we were involving shots around the pool, they were pretty impressive to me, if I'm being honest. Like, they were some of the more compelling, interesting, creative moments, whether that was seeing an eerie figure looking down at our characters or our characters looking down in the water trying to make out what they're seeing, combining that with a good use of sound effects and sound designs of the quietness that comes from you being the only person in the pool taking a late night swim. So I will say the pool of it all, atmospherically of speaking of how they created those more interesting scenes i won't say scary because we'll talk about the scares a little bit later but i thought that the pool and the idea of the the premise the concept had some highlighted moments when it fully dove into what we can do with the water how they use the cameras how they position the cameras, how they use the sound all that stuff to me was easily the best part of the film and then on a side note positively speaking there was a little bit of nostalgia that hit me with this film because i remember as a kid not having a pool not being anywhere near a pool well, besides like a YMCA or whatnot, but I had a couple friends as I got a little bit older that end up getting a pool and there's like that excitement like man they got a pool they must be cool so the film does have a moment in which like the neighbors are like oh you're the cool family you got a pool we're gonna have a pool party and this like the hype and the excitement of it all it plays into that kind of I don't want to say trope but it plays into that again that excitement of someone having a pool they, they, they play that pretty well in the movie yeah, unfortunately, that's where the pros end for me. Let's talk about my criticisms. And man, I'm just going to be honest with you all. This film did not work for me on a lot of levels. First off, to me, the film couldn't decide what it wanted to lean into more. Did it want to be this hard-hitting family drama? Because the basic story is we have this family. We have Wyatt Russell and more recently last year, Kerry Connor, fantastic actors. I like both of those actors. They're a husband and wife. They got two kids. Wyatt Russell, I believe his character name was Ray. He had to retire from Major League Baseball. He has MS and he has to retire soon. So now he has to kind of adjust to being more domestic and being there for his family, being a father, being a husband so we're seeing this family struggling with that and again they come across this pool that is haunted but it also has some abilities that may or may not help Wyatt in his recovery to maybe get back to being the baseball player he used to be so they play a lot the the most of the movie again it's somewhat of a drama playing into this guy who's trying to go back to his past but trying to be uh and the film doesn't say he's an absent father but it, it leans into the idea that when he's on the road he's not there for the kids recital he wasn't able to be there for the proms and whatnot so he's trying to make up for lost time and they really lean into that. But the issue that I have, 
I didn't care. <laughs> the film didn't do enough lead work to make me really feel the tension, the discomfort, the trying to make up for you know past mistakes and trying to be there and all the inner workings of the family dynamics just didn't really land for me. On top of that, the film wants to be this supernatural movie about this haunted pool and all of that stuff, like the lore, the mythology, the understanding of why the pool is doing what it's doing feel completely flat for me. Now listen, you have to suspend your disbelief of a haunted pool, but logically speaking, this film tries to take itself too seriously where it never leans into the ridiculousness of that plot. I mentioned Megan earlier, and a lot of Blumhouse films are just like fantastical, you know, crazy things that obviously would never happen, but those movies have fun with the genre, have fun with the idea. Think of even Five Nights at Freddy, right? These animatronics come alive. Like, your pool is haunted. There's so many creative ways you can really play into that. Like, I'm thinking of one other example, the pool preys on your fears, right? I know for me, I'm not afraid of pools, but I know a lot of people are afraid of water and pools. Play on the character's anxieties and fears, kind of like a Pennywise type of thing. No, the film has none of that of afraid of the water elements or afraid of what can be in the water. It just has this ghostly idea of haunted souls that again it's just ridiculous and it again it doesn't lean into the campiness play into that instead it just goes very straight line again trying to add in the family drama while trying to have this lore that is just completely ridiculous now talking about the actual scares for me it didn't work now again scares comedy all subjective right i'm a big horror fan if you all are new to the channel i grew up with horror so i'm kind of desensitized towards being scared but there's still moments that you can get under my skin or make me jump jump scares are very frequently used in these type of films but to me the scares fall so flat in this film. Like there are so many times where it tries to be serious, it tries to be scary, but it's just so laughable. And I'm someone, for better or for worse, I judge comedies, action films off of the first comedy bit of the film versus the first action sequence in the film. And when it comes to horror, I base how scared or how good the horror sequences, the scare factor will be based on the very first scene that plays into the genre. And the first opening scene told me everything I needed to know about the rest of this movie, which is, oh, this movie ain't gonna be scary at all. Like, this to me would be a quintessential film to take someone that you know that is either afraid of very light-hearted scary movies or has never seen a scary film, this is for them. Because to me, again, it's very subjective, but I did not find one scene to be scary at all. And I really boil that down to the filmmaker who, again, I understand first time making a film from a short film to a feature film. It's a big gap, right? And I'm looking forward to see what they do next. Because if I'm not mistaken, Bryce has like two more films that he's lined up to be a part of for Blumhouse. One is Imaginary, which is the whole bear coming to life type of thing. So... I get it. Sometimes your first outing isn't the best, but I do look at Bryce as a first time director and he has some shortcomings. Like he didn't do a good job to me of building the suspense, building the tension. The jump scares were so predictable. The moments where you're supposed to be afraid for our characters, you don't really feel that sense of urgency. Like I really blame that to number one, the direction, but also the script in this movie is pretty bad. And I want us transition into speaking to the badness of the script and translating that to the performances. I mentioned... Carrie Condon, fantastic actress. If you haven't seen her in a, her previous film, she's great. But more recently, she was in The Bances of Inner Sharon. Got nominated, and rightfully so. She's fantastic. She's the best actor in this film, even though like they don't give her a lot to do. Like She's the mother trying to be there for the husband who's trying to get over his illness while taking care of the kids, while trying to investigate the pool. She's doing a lot of legwork. And she's probably the most interesting out of the story. But the film wants you to think that Wyatt's is most interesting and I like Wyatt Russell. He doesn't have the same, I mean, it's, come on, you, his dad is Kurt Russell. The man has charisma for days, but he doesn't have that, that swag like his dad has. But I still like Wyatt. Unfortunately for me, Wyatt was the worst element of this film, first from a performance standpoint, but also he was just badly written. Again, the film wants you to feel for the guy, and you do feel for him. He's coming, he's suffering from MS, and that's a, you know, a tragic disease to have, and having to retire, and trying to, you know, like I said, domesticate himself into being a normal dad, not having to be on the road and, and playing playoff games. So I get all that, and there's moments where you see Wyatt trying to stretch the acting chops, but... It's not there. And again, I really do blame it more so, number one, I didn't think the performance was that great, but also the direction wasn't great. The story wasn't great. So Wyatt to me, and, and I say this, and I'm not trying to point him out, but 
the film puts so much pressure and reliance and really wants you to feel a certain way for the character, especially when it comes to the ending and when everything kind of wraps up, I'm like, dude, it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work because again, the performance, the direction and the writing just didn't do anyone any justice. And last thing I wanna mention about this film is when it comes down to this being based on a four minute short, which I watched and it was fine for what it was, but this to me was a perfect example of a film that should have just stayed as a short movie because when they try to fill in the rest of the story, the character development, the lore, the mythology, the mystery of a 90 minute runtime, the film just falls short of that. And then the one thing that I do wanna mention is when it comes to the actual ending, the film just rushes through everything, it's complete 180 of the rest of the movie and the moments aren't meant to be funny but they play off funny because the way that they set up the scenes it just was not executed well and then the biggest crime this film did to me was it was boring again take advantage of the ridiculous of a haunted pool like this film is trying to be like amityville horror with the dad being taken it, like it, it's, it's playing on tropes and i've said this a million times Every movie has tropes. It's just about how the creatives put their own unique spin and flair and creativity into those tropes. And this film just doesn't have any creative juices flowing throughout this movie. This film sinks to me. It goes to the deep end and it just sinks right to the bottom. So listen, I don't want to go on and on and on and make this a rant. It just didn't work for me ultimately. But before I give you all my overall thoughts, my final score, if you made it to this point of the review, I really appreciate you. And listen, if you enjoyed this film, that's good. It just wasn't for me. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Share your thoughts. Share the video. Like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Overall, Night Swim is a movie to me that unfortunately fell under the category of another mediocre January horror film that had a little bit of potential that really could have been something unique and special, but unfortunately just fell short of all of that. The acting, the direction, the story lacked quality, making it a watchable film, but a forgettable one at the same time. It lacked the excitement and the thrills, and it made it difficult to really stay engaged throughout this film. Ultimately, I would suggest seeing this. If you really want to see it, wait till it hits streaming. I'm going to give Night Swim a 2 out of 5. Again, if you liked it, if you loved it, I'm happy for you. It just wasn't a film for me. But I'm not going to let that be the, the starting point of what I still think will be a great year for not only Blumhouse, but for horror and movies in general. But again, it's the first one out of the gate. And it's a pretty forgettable one. But hey, that's my thoughts on Night Swim. Now it's your turn to let me know yours in the comments below. Did you see it in theaters? Did you see it at home? Was it a difference when you saw it at theater versus when you saw it at home? What worked, what didn't work? Favorite moments, least favorite moments? Were you scared? Do you want to get in the pool again after seeing this? Let me know your thoughts on all that in the comments below. I'm so excited to be here in the New Year's. A lot of great movies I'm looking forward to coming for you all. And again, it's unfortunate that this one didn't work for me, but many more reviews coming soon. With that being said, if you want to see more reviews from me, click this button right here. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out my end of the year list with all of the movies I talked about as far as top 10 lists. Also, check out my most recent review. You all are awesome. Hope you're staying safe, and I'll catch you all in the next video.